You see, there are so many kids in this country who look at places like museums and concert halls and other cultural centers and they think to themselves, well, that's not a place for me, for someone who looks like me, for someone who comes from my neighborhood. And those comments from Michelle Obama coming at the opening of the Whitney Museum in New York, they've stirred some controversy regarding race relations in this country. Let's be honest, it doesn't take a lot to stir up controversy these days on that topic. To further discuss this, we bring in AMAC spokesperson Josh Bernstein. Josh, it's great to have you with us. Michelle Obama also said that she guarantees that there are children, quote, who never in a million years would dream that they would be welcome in this museum. Is this a racial issue or more of a socioeconomic issue you think she's alluding to there? Well, I think it's actually both. Uh, I think it's an absolutely abhorrent statement. And for the first lady of the United States to go to the Whitney Museum in New York to do uh, an opening ceremony and immediately throw race into it, uh, I just think was an atrocious thing for her to do. And ultimately, it shows the racism uh, of the first lady and of this administration, because as I've said before, usually the folks that are crying racism the most are typically the ones that are advocating it. Well, and Josh, let, case, let me follow up with that, because during those comments, she never specifically said one particular race. She said someone who looks like a certain way may not feel welcome. Do you think people are injecting their own feelings about race into this conversation, or do you think that was implied in what she said? Well, I, I certainly think it was implied. Um, she didn't exactly say African-Americans or Hispanics, right. for that matter, and I would agree with that. But what she's basically saying is that people of color or minority status cannot go into cultural centers, cannot go into museums, cannot go into areas where there's, you know, where there's arts and, and things of that nature. And I think that that right, right then and there is kind of a racist statement to say that these folks in the inner cities don't have any cultural background and therefore can't appreciate the arts. Uh, I think it's a terrible statement, honestly. Well, I mean, you can certainly see where she's coming from. There is certainly a lack of maybe, you, like, for example, the Whitney Museum, not in a neighborhood where a lot of underprivileged people live. Well, I understand that. But ultimately, she's now speaking for every single child in and around that neighborhood that maybe there's a child that can draw. Maybe there's another Picasso uh, waiting out there in the wings. And therefore, they hear a statement like that and they automatically start thinking of themselves as a victim that, well, maybe I can't actually do it. If the first lady is going to go out there and tell me I can't do it, well, then maybe I can't do it. And I think it's that mentality that uh, that victimization that really does need to change because uh, it's ruining the vernacular in this country. All right, you know, and she, of course, is the first African-American first lady. Isn't it, you know, playing devil's advocate here, partly her job to bring up race relations in this country? I don't think necessarily in that way. I think if she wanted to put a positive light on it, she could have maybe made an example of herself and then to reach out to the minority communities and let them know that there is hope, that there is a way that even you growing up in, you know, maybe some abject poverty or, or missing a father or being from a broken home, you still can achieve greatness. And I think that if she would have taken that tone, uh, it would have been a lot better. All right, Josh Bernstein, we appreciate you being with us. Uh, Josh, uh, we'll have you back soon. Thank you so much. All right, coming up, we're going to talk more about the Boston Marathon death penalty verdict. Marathon victims asked jurors not to sentence Yohar Zarnayev to death, but they did it anyway. What this says about the state of the death penalty in this country, coming up. And big changes could soon be in store 